the 19th, the scenario of fighting games was very active. Mostly this genre tends to turning out a lot of titles similar between them, giving sometimes sternness and monotony. One person in those years invited to observe how fighting game experience were too much rigid, following almost every time the same patterns, like waiting opponents on covering to connect all moves, or special attacks. These are called desperation move. Furthermore, he also indicated how, in order to success, the game requires the ability to remember art strings. To Monobitagaki, in 1996, gave birth to one of the most radical and original fighting game, making it like no one in its genre. November 26, 1996, Dead or Alive. The arcade model Sega Model 2 hosted for the first time the first 3D fighting games developed by Tecmo. From the first minutes of gameplay, you can see a marked difference with any other fighting game of that era. This game has both characters and background totally in 3D, which was an impressive work for those years. The things which are immediately evident are the fluidity of animations and the naturalness of movements. Most of first fighting games had one singularity. Movements were always too robotic, but instead of the others, dead or alive, that's the gamer in the arena given that feeling of fluidity and continuity. Besides that, another difference was the high frame rate that was always a priority of the developers of the game. From the initial version up until now, Dead or Alive has always maintained an high performance of frame rate in order to confer high value to this experience. The game sets as key targets, staying concentrated and be careful on the match, because due to its dynamics, the situation could be overturned any time and the lightest destruction can cost you the victory. A remarkable introduction was the counter-attack, or in exact slang of game, the ult. The odds offer the chance to intercept the enemy hits in order to perform own attack in response. At the first sight, we can see like the odds may be similar to throws, but in a real martial art fight, there is a remarkable difference between odds and throw. An ult consists in taking or intercepting an enemy attack in order to respond properly. A throw on second fall consists in dragging the opponent putting him on the ground. In addiction, the styles of the holes change according to the fighting style of the character chosen. In fact, there are offensive and defensive holes. Take for example two characters, like Kenfu and Leifan. Their fighting styles, respectively, Xini Liu Quan and Taichi Chuan, in real life, plan to use the full strength using against him. So, making a hold, they do not attack, but simply deflect the blow. It's clear how the creator studied martial arts in depth to confer the game realism and give players the sensation of a dynamic and real fight. Moreover, the whole button has a dual functionality. In addition to counters, it is possible to perform special throws with other combinations of the arrows. In opposition to other games, Dead or Alive was suitable to all types of gamers, newbies and professionists. Itagaki chose to make a simple approach to common strings, by trying to simplify the input. In this way, everyone can be able to play and most of all confer an extensive versatility at your own style of combat. And thanks to this key feature, Itagaki managed to create a real-time strategy fight experience. This goal was a fine one, we can be mistaken if we will really think that these features can make the game easy. But the moment the player proceeds forward and faces the hardest level of the CPU, game over after game over, we can realize how much the game has to be studied until we all of its secrets are unveiled. 
this marked a crucial difference between a newbie and a pro gamer. The few medium hard strings to learn were only the throws ones, because not all of them had one button to active throws but various combinations. So the game was focused on these three buttons H, P and K, hold, punch and kick. Different combination of these buttons means different results. As long as it could be a personal perspective, common strings could have their own logic, based on the type of attack or throw made. Let's try to take a for example one throw of Okazumi. To do so, it is necessary to issue the following input down, down, back, back, H key. Kazumi will jump over the head of the opponent to fling him to the ground with the strength of both legs. In a reality inside the game, one single kick with key is a weak move. Instead with each key, attack is clearly strongest. Same things if we make it with PK combination. Just because attacks like this will use several parts of body. It wasn't at all possible to attack foe, but we could fool him with another feature, the delay. It is a feature that, in certain moments, can be useful. It consists on delaying a combo input in order to continue later on. This allows us to deviate opponent focus, who previously was sure the combo has left off. This ends with a surprise to the opponent. After first rounds, we can notice another typical aspect of the game, Danger Zoom. It was one of the primitive interactive experiments which has been put on a video game. In addition to fear of making a ring out, there was a risk to blow up, to receive much more damage than usual. This is something that has never been seen in a video game before. In an ordinary fighting game, crouching was considered a good policy to avoid eye attacks or throw, but in Dead or Alive it was definitely not a guarantee. Fighters had also the chance to perform throws with crouching foe. This ended up in expanding the offensive and defensive strategy of high level as anyone keeps playing it. The strategy of staying on the ground wasn't either a chance to have a break. Another feature of the game were the stomp and the flying stomp. In other ways, those are moves that can hit the foe on the ground with a final blow. And in order to avoid them, we needed to press quickly the H button to roll away. And of course, the danger zone was not even a better call. If the player wanted, he had not to suffer all throws, therefore the basic throw, HP, could be easily avoided, fog in close timing, on the same combined buttons. This is not the only way to avoiding throw. Some characters like Tina, Bayman or Leifang have common throws, to put it short, a series of throws chained between them. If the player was fast enough, with a precise pushing of each button, he could have avoided them. This could have conferred much more enthusiasm on the match. We cannot help but talking about the future that marked Dead or Alive for all its future chapters. The physical movement of breast. A really particular choice of the author, but it is, irrefutably, the study of a physical system which was not being implemented in video games world. In addition to this, there existed a good physical system of other thin elements like ponytail or a cloth hanging from the side of a character. Combo attacks, hold, throws evasion, danger zone, ring out, low throw, stomp, delay, real time strategy. Only after a series of game overs, the player could have admit that he improved. The game required a high concentration of it. With that we could talk about the component that made the game fast, frenetic, but at the same time accurate. In one word, hardcore. As a matter of fact, this game could be honestly defined an hardcore game for its large amount of features that it offers. There were released several console versions of the first chapter, like Sega Saturn and PlayStation. The last was one of the most full contents version. An interesting mood was, indeed, the training mode, known all over the world for its best options like common lists or technical informations. 
the number of combos, normal damages or danger zone damages. But the only option that made game exclusive was the common training. In this menu we could render visible in a match the commons list of a fighter. And as long as the strings were inputted correctly, the better was our perception of a fighting style of our character. PlayStation version also shows other features that were unlockable by beating other moods. Placed in a menu called the Extra Config, this allows us to modify some little aspects of the game in order to make it more amusing. For example, we could modify the size of the ring, the damages of the danger zone, or even modify the voice of an announcer. Here's a little interesting. If we put the disc on a computer inside it, we can find a directory labeled Umake. In it, there are backgrounds for computer desktop, the authors offered to those who buy the game. As long as we play, we cannot ignore the awful amount of costumes, especially for girls. Another key thing that marked the game during its life. In the PlayStation version, we can also see two new characters, Ayane and Bass, right at the start. The developers didn't mean to implement these two follows, but afterwards, due to internal choices, it was decided to put them in a tournament. Actually, Ayane probably already existed, but no one could figure it out. She was the dummy of the training mod in Sega Saturn version. One unlockable custom for the PlayStation version of Ayane could prove that this conjecture may be true. Her moves were almost identical to Kazumi's ones, but during the development of the character, Hayane had her own style and personality. In October 16, 1998, was released the last arcade version of the first brand of the game, Dead or Alive++. The question is, why this name? There are two simple reasons. The first one, confirmed by the author himself, is that the game was developed using C++ programming language. The second one was for a gameplay mode that developers of other games decided to include only several years after. That is called it Tag Mode. Unlike modern concepts of our knowledge, Tag Mode in Plus Plus planned to choose two characters. The only flaw was that during the match the crowd changed not each other's positions. We could have played with the second character in case of the first one was defeated. Obviously, the game was not only in tag mode. We could have chosen to face the match with one character. This version of Dead or Alive had a lot of changes in the gameplay dynamics. For example, the stun. After well aimed blows or counter blows, the four for a few moments was stunned, and in order to recover, he had to avoid the next hits. We can notice the stun animation the moment the opponent's stagger due to suffered hit. In an ordinary fighting game, when our own hit was scored during a full attack, in slang it says counter attack. But in Dead or Alive Plus Plus, there was not only that, just because the hole could be countered. This was useful to apply extra damage, but of course, it costs a very precise timing. If the input of the hold and hit were very close in terms of time, the hold could do more damage than both lower counter hold and high counter hold, the last only in a very tight time. This version of Dead or Alive has the almost definitive engine that we know nowadays, taking this structure to the other games of the series with other features in addition. Exactly one year later, from the last arcade of Dead or Alive, October 16, 1999. Dead or Alive 2.